Hello. Thank you for joining us this evening. My name is Gloria Malone and I work at the Champaign County Library and um, some of you may know me. I, I like to work in the local history room and I'm also in charge of the Imagine Lab. And I developed this program a few years ago for the Seroptimus Club and so I've done it a couple times and I've added to it and I hope that you'll find these women as interesting as I do. Um, I'm going to introduce you to a number of different women. I picked 1960 just kind of as an arbitrary year and um, we couldn't include everybody. So it's people who had something special in their lives prior to 1960. If you know of anyone that I could add to this program, please feel free to um, contact me. My email will be at the end of the program. And um, if you have questions about where I got the information or anything like that, please let me know. Now, most of the information I got from either County Histories or our online newspaper database. If you have not heard of our online newspaper database, um, you need to check it out. It's a free resource that's on our website, and you can access any of the urban area newspapers from um, 1822 to 2018. And the actual newspapers are scanned and, and on there, so you can search by keyword, name, um, you, or you can even just browse by date. So if you know if so, when something happened, you can just look through the newspapers for that date. So I got a lot of my stories from um, those resources and a few others that we have here at the library. And I can let you know where those um, are coming from. This is my first attempt at doing a presentation on Facebook Live, so please bear with me. I don't think I'll be able to see any comments. Um, I'm not sure if I will. So I do have um, a coworker here who's trying to watch the comments and will let me know if there's something I need to um, attend to, or we will um, at the end of the program. I'll check the comments and try to answer any questions that you that you may have. There is a handout on our Facebook page that just lists the women and some basic information about them. So if you, um, I, I'm going to talk fast. I do talk fast. It's one of my, my, my um, little things I have about me. So um, if you miss somebody's name, you can check out that handout and get the basic information on those women. I also want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce any names. I am truly sorry. Okay, so the real reason we're here this evening. The first picture that you see, oh, let me get back to my program here. The first picture you see is a number of young ladies in front of what was then the Urbana Public Library. Um, it, they had taken the Boxwell-Patterson examination, and this is from the early 1900s. This exam was basically a proficiency exam to test the fitness of pupils to enter high school. Um, you can actually see a set of the questions on archive.org. So this was just a picture um, of these young ladies taken in front of the library. Now this library was located on West Market Street, but it's not the one that is there now. It was on the, the south side of West Market Street, and it's where the post office parking lot is now. Um, they tore, the library moved in there around 1930, and or maybe, yeah, I think it was 1930. And then a few years after that, they decided to build a new post office. And so the library moved over to the Moorlight building, which is across the street, which is um, where a lot of people remember the library being on West Market. So this was the old library. Next is Aunt Fanny Carter. She was a poor woman. However, she did own a home and some property in Urbana. She earned money to buy the property over to the washboard. So she worked really hard for her money. She died in 1864. It was in her home that the St. Paul AME Church was organized in 1824. The property she owned is the present site of the church. Sophia Holt. She makes me laugh. She is a first practici practicing physician in Woodstock. She made concoctions from herbs and bark and was well known to sweat the illness from the sick. Her husband was the undertaker and Sophia would often give the funeral sermon for those that died. She did not worry about anyone's feelings. If she felt they lived a righteous life, she would wave them through the pearly gates. If not, she directed them elsewhere. Eliza Corwin. She was born in 1826 in Pennsylvania to Emma and Phoebe Kimber. Her family moved to Urbana in 1838. She married Ichabod Corwin, who was a lawyer and a common pleas judge. She fondly remembered being part of the campaign for President William Henry Harrison. In 1840, she was one of 26 girls that rode in a log cabin used in the parades during the log cabin campaign. It was on this cabin that the inscription was, use the people as old correct. 
So this is one of the stories of where OK comes from. Next is Mary Loring Williams. She was born in 1819 and died in 1910. Her husband Milo G. Williams came to Urbana in 1850 to assume control of Urbana University and Mary worked with him in starting the university. She was well known and respected throughout the community. During the Civil War, her home was always open to workers preparing bandages and clothing for the soldiers. When President Lincoln's funeral train stopped in Urbana, she was one of the women who boarded to place flowers on his casket. She was also a charter member of the Urbana chapter of the DAR. On the day of her funeral, the flag was displayed at half mast upon the GAR pole in the square. This was the first time in honor of a woman, the flag of the brand post was flown at half mast. Stokes Millinery Parlor was established in 1857 by Miss A.B. Stokes. Her parlor was located on Scioto Street and according to an article in 1902, only expert trimmers of highest recommendations are employed by Miss Stokes and the most select and exclusive families of Urbana are numbered among her patrons. Amanda White. She was the wife of Addison White. She was instrumental in organizing the Mechanicsburg Bethel AME Church. She was born in slavery. Her father fought in the Civil War and after the war they moved to Ohio. Amanda was known for her culinary expertise. She cooked at the Anderson Hotel in Mechanicsburg and is said to have had her own restaurant. Mary Lyons was the first woman clerk in Urbana. She was employed by the Hit store to be in charge of the dress goods section in 1870. She was a dressmaker and served faithfully for 40 years. The Hit store was located on the southeast section of the square. Um, Main News was located there and it is currently the, currently the location of the small park in downtown Urbana. So in the picture, it's on the, the tall building on the right. It was the Hit store. Alice M. Tracy, MD, was listed in a booklet titled Women in Professions, 1788 to 1888. She can be found in the newspaper in the 1880s as having an office on the north side of Scioto Street, second door east of Locust Street. So I'm assuming it's the actual second door, but I'm not sure. But those are the two ads that were in the paper for her, one in 83 and one in 88. Next is Mrs. A. Grove. She was the proprietress of the new Grove Hotel lo located on East Court Street. An article in 1902 states, it is the only hotel in the city thoroughly equipped with the latest sanitary improvements. Theatrical troops were well known to stay in this hotel when they were in the area. And the Grove Hotel started in 1870 with 12 rooms and by 1922, it had grown to 44 rooms. After the death of Mrs. Groves in 1924, it was taken over by her son-in-law, Mr. Kennedy. Mary A. Dickerson, born a slave in 1802, she had 12 children, all born in slavery. Five were sold and one enlisted in the army. She never heard from them again. Three others died and three came to Ohio. They moved to Urbana around 1878 and lived on the corner of Water in Kenton. She was well respected and died at the age of 108. Sarah Dupler was a doctor in the late 19th century she was the daughter of Jacob Leonard. Sarah lived in the house at 3627 East Route 29 and is said to haunt the home to this day. She can sometimes be seen looking from the second floor window over the porch. This was mentioned in the Haunted Ohio books by Chris Woodyard. Lydia E. Humphrey, she left her estate to establish and maintain an orphan's home in Champaign County. She died in 1907, but her will was made in 1890. Her heirs were unaware of her wish and it was a surprise when her will was filed for probate. At the time of her death, the Champaign County Children's Home had already been established, so the money was used to build a school to be part of the complex. The school was completed in 1912 and was used until about 1924 when it was a residence for maintenance personnel. Five years later, it was converted into a little boy's cottage and was used until 1958 when the children's home closed. By 1960, the school was the only building left of the children's home complex, the others being demolished. <clears throat> Nellie Helmlich. She was asked to model for a statue, statue titled America to be on display at the Chicago's World's Fair in 1893. According to an article in 1893, she was the form of a Venus, tall, stately, and well-rounded with a graceful, queenly bearing. 
According to newspaper articles, Nellie was chosen to represent the U.S. in the Congress of Beauties at the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. <clears throat> there was a gathering of beautiful women from every civilized country. Those who saw her there said she wore a crown labeled Miss America, and the unofficial verdict was that she was the most beautiful there. <clears throat> After the fair, she married a millionaire. Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> After the fair, she married a millionaire from New York City, Alexander Grant. However, they divorced after a few years. She died in 1911. So I cannot find a picture of Nellie. I would love to find one of her. This statue, I do not know if it was the one that she um, posed for, but I recently found it that it was done by a Vinnie. Mm, I don't have the name here now, but I can get you the sculptor's name if you would like. This statue was, or this bust was shown at the fair and it is titled America. So I do not know if this was the one that was modeled, that Nellie modeled for, but um, I did want to include it since it did match some of the information that was listed in the newspaper in 1893. Harriet Millen first became librarian when the Urbana Library was housed in the city building. She was librarian during the time of great changes in the library. First was the move to the Grace M.E. Church and then to the Moore Light Building. Prior to World War II, she helped organize library units in small communities throughout the county. She retired in 1945. Nancy Tappan Houston was prominent in civil, social, and church life of Urbana. She was a graduate and teacher at the Steubenville Female Seminary. After her marriage, the family came to Urbana. She was one of the founding members of the Urbana Library and was its president until her death. She was very active in the Missionary Society of the First Presbyterian Church. She died in 1921 in her home where she lived for more than 56 years. And an interesting side note, she attended Lincoln's first inaugural ball while staying with her uncle, Edwin Stanton. This is a painting of Nancy Tappan Houston. Um, the picture on the left is an interior picture of the library that we saw in the first picture, um, the one that has been demolished. And her painting is on the wall. Um, and that's the painting that's on the wall in the old library. Alice Archer Sewell James. Born in 1870 in Glendale, Ohio, her father was brought to Urbana to be president of Urbana College. After a few years, the family moved away. However, after a number of years, she returned to live in Urbana. She married John H. James in 1899. All of her life, she had a natural artistic ability. Her paintings were displayed in museums all over the world. She was listed in Who's Who in America as an author, poet, and musician, as well as an artist. She had published songs and poems. The Urbana Movement, a new and different type of art school, was opened in, eight, opened in Urbana in 1933, thanks to Mrs. James. It was a gathering of people who were dedicated to living their daily lives from a spiritual perspective. A wide variety of topics were taught, including religion, painting, modeling, Greek drama, political science, and folk dancing. At first, they met at the James Mansion on South High Street and later in Uptown Studio. Her oil painting, The Holy Family, dated about 1904, has been singled out as one of the best religious paintings ever produced in the United States. She died in 1955. There is a book, um, the cover you can see on the screen says, Stay By Me, Roses by Alice Blackmer Skinner. Um, that is a really wonderful book about this lady, and we do have it at the library that you can check out. And the wedding, that's her wedding picture that's included in the book. Thurza Furrow Kaiser was born in St. Paris. Soon after marriage, her father moved to Chicago and they became very rich. A summer home was built in St. Paris called Garden Glow and it was completed in 1913. Mrs. Kaiser spent many summers in St. Paris. It was said that her family brought, bought the first automobile to town. She built a Christian science church in St. Paris and, th and it thrived for a number of years. But after spending less time in town, she expressed interest in donating the building for a library. In July 1936, the new library was dedicated to the community. The Kaiser family also donated land for Kaiser Lake north of St. Paris. According to a newspaper article, the state agreed to certain stipulations, including no Ferris wheels, roller coasters, or merry-go-rounds be constructed at the lake. According to her obituary, she remembers seeing her mother place a wreath on the casket of President Lincoln when the president's train stopped in St. Paris. Martha Cunningham Dolby, she lived 1878 to 1956. She and her brother were the first African-Americans to enroll in Manchester College in Indiana. 
She was the first woman installed as the Minister of the Church of the Brethren on December 30th, 1911. She served as the first resident minister of the Church of God on Hill Street in Urbana, where she served until her death on October 21st, 1956. In 1917, she moved to Urbana and the closest Church of the Brethren was in Springfield. They commuted for a while, but did not feel welcome, so she ended up going to the Methodist Church in Urbana. She moved away for some time, but returned in 1936. Lily and Dorothy Gish. Over the years, I've heard a number of stories about the Gish sisters, but it was always just stories. Official biographies state Lillian was born in Springfield. These are, a few, there are, these are a few facts that we have on the family. So Dorothy and Lillian were daughters of Mary Robinson McConnell Gish and James Gish. Mary's mother, the sister's grandmother, Elizabeth Ellen Robinson McConnell lived in Urbana. Elizabeth's sister, Carrie McConnell Robinson lived in Urbana at one time. According to an article in 1925, Mary Gish lived in Urbana on East Church Street. It states Lillian was born in Urbana, but the family soon moved to Springfield, so that is why it often states she was born in Springfield. Lillian was born on October 13, 1893, and Dorothy was born in 1898. According to Jan Vincent on Facebook, after Mary and James separated, the girls were sent for a short time to live with their Aunt Carrie, who lived on Reynolds Street. In the 1892 city directory, there is a listing for Mary and Harry McConnell and Elizabeth Robinson at 223 East Church Street. In 1978, an article in the Urbana Citizen mentions that a resident remembers Lillian and Dorothy Gish appearing after a show in Urbana at the theater and signing autographs and chatting with moviegoers. I found this picture today and I thought I would just throw it in here. It's the girls basketball team from 1913 in Mechanicsburg. So um, it was interest is interesting to see that they had a girls basketball team back then. Frances Jean Moore of North Lewisburg started painting and drawing in grade school. She was an accomplished artist, having won several awards throughout the state. She worked in oils, pastels, and watercolors. She overcame partial deafness and other ills, but continued to create. She studied under John H. James in Urbana. Sorry, under Mrs. John H. James in Urbana. She passed away on October 3rd, 1975. One of her paintings, actually I think two of her paintings are at the North Lewisburg Branch Library. Mrs. Golden Melise is the first woman in Champaign County to become a candidate for mayor of any of its villages. She ran for mayor of North Lewisburg in 1937. She didn't win. Blanche Howe turned 100 in 1993. An article told of her experiences through World War II. She had 12 children. Six of her sons went to the Army during World War, five, World War II. Five were drafted and one wanted to enlist, but she would not sign for him, but her husband ended up signing for him. They all came back alive. Grace Fern Heck was born in 1905. She graduated from OSU in 1928. She received her Juris Doctorate in 1930 and passed the Ohio Bar Exam in 1930 and then was appointed to the U.S. District Court in 1932. She became the prosecuting, of prosecuting attorney for Champaign County in 1933, which she held through 1937. She was the first woman to hold this office in Ohio. She worked as a lawyer until she served as municipal judge in Champaign County from 1954 to 1958. Harriet Day Bricker was a teacher in Urbana High School, but is known because of her husband. John W. Bricker was governor of Ohio, and so Harriet became Ohio's first lady. She did not like the limelight and tried to stay in the background. She had hoped to be a chemist. However, her father was old fashioned and thought teaching was all women could do. John Bricker served as governor from January 9, 1939 to January 8, 1945. So the picture on the left is actually her senior picture from Urbana High School. And it does mention that um, she was very good in chemistry in the yearbook. The um, picture on the right is a picture of the couple. The picture in the middle is the one that if you noticed on Facebook, put who, who am I? It was Harriet. Mabel Hayden served as clerk for the village of Mutual since 1939. She served for 59 years. Her birthplace was Yankee Hill, the second highest elevation point in the state of Ohio, and as of 1977, the original old barn still, stand, still stood there. When I did this speech um, a year or two ago, I had someone say that she was a very good cook 
and she, I can't remember what it was, but she made something and like sold it at the um, country club. And they always loved getting um, getting food from her. When Catherine Kern's father died in 1952, she was appointed to succeed him as postmaster by President Truman. President Eisenhower appointed a different person that served for a few years, and Mrs. Kearns was appointed again by President Kennedy in 1961. Elizabeth Brand was afflicted with deafness since early childhood. She did not let this hold her back. She helped organize the Dayton League for the Heart of Hearing, and before that, she founded the Pittsburgh School of Lip Reading. She worked with returning servicemen and nurses from World War I, and she was the daughter of J.F. Brand. Her father helped establish the W.H. Marvin Company. Ethel A. Bot Ethel a. Botkins Redding opened Ethel's Flower Shop in Urbana in 1930. It was first located at 102 Soda Street and then moved to its present location, 239 Soda Street. Ethel retired in 1972, but the shop still operates under her name. So the picture on the left is a picture of her. I believe it was the freshman class. Um, might be younger than that, looking at those um, individuals. I have to double check, but she is the one with the black bow in her hair. Genevieve Allen graduated as Valley Victorian of her class in Urbana High School on June 9, 1933. She was the first black student to achieve this top ranking in Urbana. Luetta Curtis Eagleston, born 1925, was the first woman projectionist in the United States and one of the first women theater managers in Ohio. She was the assistant manager of the Gloria in 1943. She died in 2008. Mrs. Harry Hoover was chosen as the teacher on Romper Room, a preschool children's show that aired in WDTN out of Dayton, January 13, 1956. This is not a picture of her, but it is a picture of Romper Room. In 1957, Urbana College was in trouble. Carolyn Blackmer, a former student, teacher, and wife of a former president of the university, fought to save the school. She was instrumental in securing a new president and increased student enrollment by 100%. Judge Ann C. Roberts served as Champaign County Probation Officer from 1947 to 1959 and elected probate and juvenile court judge 1960 to 1973. She served one year prior to that filling Judge Kern's position when he left to take another judgeship. Blanche Ray served as Deputy Auditor of Urbana under Horace Crow beginning in 1931 and continued as Deputy Auditor when in 1951 she was elected Auditor and served 27 years. She also held the position of Clerk of Urbana Council for 17 years. Bernice Brandstetter served with the Waves in World War II. She had dreamed of entering the service even before the war broke out, but her parents wanted her to go to college. She joined the Navy anyways on January 13, 1944. She did go to college, aviation machinist mate school. This is a quote from her. Engines would be brought in from overseas and we would rebuild them in our machine shop and then send them onto the theater of war. She met her future husband who was a sailor in San Diego. Betty Frazier Richards, army nurse, one of the first allied nurses into Tokyo Bay. In an article in 1995, she spoke of her work with the allied prisoners of war in Japan. She later married Ted Richard, Dr. Ted Richards and discovered that his hospital attack ship and her ship ducks side by side in Yokohama, Yokohama Harbor. Did want to say with um, Bernice, I know some of her um, clothing and some of her artifacts are in the Champaign County Historical Society. I'm not sure about um, Mrs. Richards. Adelaide Luce worked, at, worked for the Citizens Bank, which is now the Park Bank. She worked there in the late 1920s and early 1930s. At that time, women were not allowed to continue working at the bank once they were married. When Adelaide married, they decided that she could continue working for the bank, thus opening the door for other women to do the same. She went on to hold a managerial position and was with the bank until her retirement. Her son Ward told a story about her time at the bank. Following his inauguration on March 4, 1933, President Franklin Roosevelt set out to rebuild confidence in the nation's banking system. On March 6, he declared a four-day national banking holiday that kept all banks shut until Congress could act. Adelaide was given the task of answering the phone during that time. 
She shared with family members that people she had known all her life were extremely upset, yelling at her and saying things they may not have otherwise have said. In a 1992 article, there was um, it was published telling about how she had attended the county fair every year for 83 years. She stated it was a family affair and was of great importance to her family. One year she remembered there were pickpockets at the fair. She recalled her father chasing after one and women and children were told to hide under the picnic tables. The pickpockets were caught, so you don't have to worry about that. So she is, um, there is the 1925 girls basketball team from Westville and she is in there. And then the other picture is her family in the car getting ready to go to the fair. Anna Bosler, this was the main reason we started doing this program um, a few years ago. She is buried in Oakdale Cemetery and the Seroptimist found out that, um, I believe it was her year wasn't on the, her tombstone. There was something with her tombstone and the Seroptimist wanted to um, do something for her because Anna was the first woman sheriff of Champaign County. And um, so they wanted to talk about her and I just added some other people along with her. So her husband, Jacob, was sheriff of Champaign County when he was shot and killed in the line of duty on October 10, 1926. Anna was appointed the next day to complete her husband's term as sheriff. The man that killed Jacob had been released from the Columbus State Hospital in September of 1926. His wife was supposed to take him to an aunt's home in California, but they were still in Urbana when a call came in saying that Harry Sprague was threatening to kill his wife. Anna was the first and only female sheriff of Champaign County. Um, there are, she was not the first in Ohio, but she was, I believe it was the third woman um, sheriff in, in Ohio, and it was very close. They were all in the 1920s that they were um, women sheriffs started in Ohio. In October 26, there was an editorial in the newspaper stating that no one but a man should be sheriff or sh of Champaign County. It is a man's job. It also stated that Mrs. Bosler should receive the appointment of deputy sheriff by whoever is named to fill her the chair tonight. She is entitled to that. It will be a way whereby the county can pay her back in a measure for the loss of her husband. The County Republican Central Committee met to discuss a candidate, candidate to replace Bozer's name on the November ballot. There were supporters for her to be nominated. However, Pearl Jones was the name to appear on the ballot and he was eventually elected the next sheriff of Champaign County. She held the office until he took office in January. So the final lady we're going to talk about is one of my favorites, and it is because I'm related to her through marriage, and she makes me laugh. I can find many, many articles about her. Um, her name is Sibby Malone McCarthy. She was a very colorful individual. There are just too many arrests to listen, uh, li arrests to list, and stories to share. But here are a few. In 1887, Mary McCarthy widow of the late Patrick McCarthy was served notice to Sibby Malone, alias Sibby McCarthy, to vacate the Washington house. Sibby supposedly married Patrick, even though he still had a wife in Ireland, and the first wife was not happy about it and wanted her to leave the property. Through the years 1899 to 1909, there were many raids made on the hotel. So Sibby, I, I realized I didn't mention this, so Sibby owned a hotel called the Cottage Hotel. It was on West Court Street, and it was actually at, um, 327 West Court Street. And so at that time, the railroad track was not high up like it is now. It was like level with the rest of the, the street. And that area of town was didn't have a very good reputation. So of course her hotel didn't have a very good reputation. So there were many raids made on her hotel. She was arrested often for selling liquor on Sunday. Um, she would have her saloon open on Sundays. She was conducting a house of ill fame um, she gave knockout drugs, supposedly, to customers and to um, steal from them. She was charged with assault. And one of my favorite stories is that she would switch, switch cigars. So at one time, Urbana was well known for cigar making. And there was a lot of cigar factories in town. So she would buy a box of nice cigars, take out the cigars, put cheap cigars in the box, and then sell them as, as, as if they were the nice cigars. So that was one way that she um, was able to make a little bit of extra money. This editorial cartoon is from um, the newspaper 1922, and she's being arrested by Sheriff Heatherman. And I like to think that it could be the first editorial cartoon of a woman being arrested in at least Champaign County, if not Ohio. 
in October 1933, um, Sibby died, and the newspaper didn't really go into much detail. It just stated she was, quote, one of Urbana's best-known best citizens, which I thought was a very nice way of putting that. In 1936, the City Board of Health ordered the notorious McCarthy Hotel must close. Um, at this time, she had passed on, but the building was owned by her estate. In years gone by, the building was notorious. It had housed liquor traffic at its worst, with attend attending rowdyism and prostitution. Even in, her, in, even in her death, she made the papers. Um, so I was looking through our city directories. In 1930 is the last time I can see it listing for that address. We don't have, we have a lot of missing um, city directories for that time. But in 1940, there's no listing for that address. There's a couple empty locks, lots at that area. So I believe the building was torn down. If anybody does happen to have a picture of that, I would love to have it or any other information about her. Um, she's just a really fun person to learn about. Well, I hope you enjoyed this program. I hope you found these women as interesting as I do. Like I said, it's just a little brief um, overview of their lives and you might wanna look into more of them, or more information about them. Um, I have presented this a couple, more a couple times and every time I do a little bit more digging, and I was thinking today I need to look at some birth records for some people. We do have birth records here. So in our local history room, we do have a number of official records for Champaign County. We have county histories. We have family histories. Um, a number of really interesting books that have um, the history of Champaign County. So if you'd like to check some of those out, let us know. Stop by. Um, and if you have any suggestions of women that I could add, please let me know. And if you have any questions, please let me know. There's my email address. You can email me anytime, and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Um, let me see. I, I, my coworker never told me that there was any messages I needed to respond to. So um, hopefully you enjoyed this. If you do have any questions later on, email me, call me, and I hope you enjoy it. So we'll see you later. Watch, we do have some other programs. I forgot I was supposed to say this. We have some other programs coming up. We have a book talk um, coming up next Tuesday that will be on Facebook and Zoom. There is a link on our Facebook page and our website on how to register for that program. On the 30th, we're having a trivia contest. It's the Publis, Pub, Publis, I can't even say it, Publis Pub Trivia. Um, it's going to be a fun night of competitions. It's a Saturday night at 7 o'clock. You can sign up for that. And then we have grab and go programs um, every month for all ages, preschool up to adults. We have little kits that you can pick up at different times. So check our online calendar for that. And those have different projects that you can do every month to kind of take a break from all the screen time and do something with your hands. So um, just keep an eye out on what we're doing. We have our winter reading club going on right now and there's links to it from our website so check out our website follow us on facebook and um we hope to see you soon thank you bye